So here we go, another handheld entering the market. Is this one gonna blow away the competition? What is the competition? Is this gonna be for you? And why does the company absolute, why are they doing where you pay $5 on their website to put a deposit down to buy it on Kickstarter for a lower price? I don't understand. I've never seen another company like take a deposit on their website and then launch a Kickstarter. I don't know. I don't know how that's going down, but their Kickstarter should be going live around the time that this video goes up. And I've had this thing in my possession for a little while now. I've done a little, you know, first look type of video, and I've kind of teased at a few things that, you know, I wanted to bring up concerning this thing. So this is a handheld that is mainly meant for cloud gaming. And is there a market for it? Sure. It's not a market that everybody really cares about. But when it comes to a device like this, I look at the versatility. Can this be used for other things? Can I emulate on it? Can I play native games? Well, they sent me this uh, prototype, and I've had it in my hands for a little while, and it is a decent quality little thing, but there's a lot of problems with the prototype. I mean, a lot to where it's really hard to give a fair assessment of what they provided to me here to share with you guys. Like, but the things I found negative with it, the company had already stated to me before I even brought up the negatives that, hey, we are aware of these issues and the final version, we're taking care of that kind of thing. So stuff like the buttons on this, they don't always register because the membranes are bad or the connection is bad. Like, I don't know how often I've pressed like the A button expecting something to happen and nothing happens, but it's a prototype issue and they have brought that up. Uh, the D-pad is not great, uh, but everything else about it seems okay. The main competition here is the Logitech G Cloud. That thing is priced at $350, but it's usually on sale for a little under $300. This thing is supposed to be going live at an early bird price of $200, where if you, I don't know if you had to pay the $5 reservation to get that. I, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to check the Kickstarter if you're actually interested here. I know if you did the $5 reservation, you get like three accessories that are worth like 10 bucks uh, sent with your order for free, I, I guess, you know, whatever. But you get that super early bird pricing. The normal price is supposed to be 250 bucks, So $50 less than the price of the G Cloud. Um, and I've stated this. I bought the G Cloud for purpose of making a video, and I don't think it was worth it. But I do use it a lot because I actually like it for what it is. And I'm kind of glad like, hey, I'm actually getting use out of it. But if I didn't buy it for the purpose of making a video, to make money, to make a video, to share with people my thoughts on it, what if I ran out to buy one? No, because I'm not into cloud gaming the way maybe some people might be. But I, I seen the comments on my channel. It doesn't seem like a lot of my viewers are, but there are a handful that can appreciate it. But what I liked about the G Cloud was being able to play some native stuff decently well. Because specs wise, the G Cloud is, you know, steps above the absolute handheld. They do share a lot of similarities. The UI is essentially the same, um, but the specs, the specs are not the same other than the screen. They both, the screen is beautiful. There's no denying that. Like I love the screen and the sound coming out of the speakers is, is pretty damn good. I do enjoy both of these handhelds as far as the screen and the audio goes. So there's not really an issue there. But specs wise, you know, the absolute, you have a MediaTek 8385 uh, and it has an ARM Cortex A53 CPU clocked at two gigahertz with a Mali G52 GPU, four gigabytes of RAM, 5,000 milliamp hour battery. And then the same, pretty much the same seven inch IPS display at 1080p 60 hertz. And I've said this before, I wish this was the screen that was on the, the Valve Steam Deck. It is very vibrant. It looks nice. It looks really nice. No bleeding or anything. It's just a really nice looking screen. But as far as the specs go natively, there's not going to be a lot that you could play. There's going to be, certainly there's going to be plenty of things, but if you're expecting like, I'm going to emulate tons of things on this device. And I may have to do a follow-up testing more emulation. But, you know, I, I tried uh, GameCube through Dolphin, and I tweaked the settings all over the place, all over your face. I copied the same settings I have on the G Cloud. I've lowered things. I've, you know, just manipulated stuff. And I can't get GameCube to run at all. I mean, it does run, 
but it's not playable is what my point is. Yeah, I could play like PS1, Super Nintendo, uh, stuff like that. But beyond that, there's very few things that I'm able to really get to play fine. And with the prototype that they sent me, I have no access to the Google Play Store. So like I have to sideload things and then certain you know, ways about things. I don't want to sign in with any of my legit accounts because I, I don't know, you know, getting a, a handheld from a company I've never heard of before. I, I am a little hesitant at times of uh, signing into my, my accounts. So, you know, I have to create little special accounts for, for purpose of this. But yeah, you know, I couldn't just go on the Play Store and download stuff. I couldn't get the Play Store installed. I was just having issues with that. It's supposed to be something where when the final version comes out that, That'll all be added and be taken care of. But with this prototype, it was just very limited. So how can I really share too much here? But what I can share um, is, and I brought this up before, is, you know, I, I don't think this company necessarily had, like, bad intentions. Maybe there's a, a slight language barrier. But I can sniff out some, some you know, shadiness pretty easily. And, you know, maybe with what they've told me seemed a little innocent. But I do feel like... They're trying to manipulate the views out there as far as the reviews. I don't know who all they sent this to. I don't. I don't watch other people's uh, videos on the same stuff I'm looking at. But from what they've told me was like, hey, if you give us a positive review, if you go on YouTube and speak very highly of our device, like we'll take care of you. We'll send you another one. We'll send you a, a newer prototype. Then you can compare it. We'll send you the final version for free. You don't have to back our Kickstarter. We'll send you this. We'll send you that. But if you say something negative, we're gonna give you. A, we're gonna send you something. We're gonna send you a shipping label, and you give us the device back, and we don't want nothing to do with you anymore. To me, that's that's come on now. So that that makes me suspicious that if others don't bring up similar things. I don't know what everybody's been told. I don't know if other people have been told the same thing as me, but I just have those suspicions. If somebody else got the same message as me, are they going to be like, oh, I'm going to praise this thing so I can continue getting products from them? H Homie, don't play that. Not here. I'm not doing it. I don't know that there's necessarily a big market for this thing. And honestly, if I had to choose, and like I said, I'm I'm not the target audience for this other than just sharing, you know, reviews and capabilities of this, these devices. And this one is gimped compared to the fifty to hundred dollar more G Cloud. Um, it, it just, if I were to pick, I would stick with the G Cloud. I wouldn't care about saving the fifty to a hundred dollars. I like what I can do with the G Cloud now when I actually want to use it. But I can't. I'm not trying to justify my purchase on that. I can't. I think it's not worth it. Everything you could do with the G Cloud. Uh, you could do it with the phone. If you want to set up a little handheld console, you just buy, you know, any of the controller grips out there, sync a controller to your handheld or to your phone. You have a little handheld system that's probably more powerful than the Absolute or the G Cloud. So there's options out there, but I, it's I'm not in the market for these kind of things. And if I was, I would choose the G Cloud over this, or I would choose my phone with a controller over this. But hey, I mean, if you could justify the $200 price point, go to the Kickstarter, check them out. I just had to share my experience. I'm not blown away by this thing. Um, but at the same time, yeah, you know, it's not horrible for what it is. It does what it's supposed to do. Stream games doesn't need to be powerful to stream games. Bye. <laughs>